Well, welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. Joining today from your city administrator office, it's the administrator, Chad Brooklyn. How are you doing today? Good. I love the shirt. That's like my shirt that I wear, you know, on a regular basis. So. Thank you. I okay. appreciate okay. you letting me borrowing it. <laughs> Well, you're, uh, well, I'll just leave that alone. <laughs> no, nah, it's good. Uh, we got a lot to talk about in the uh, month of uh, September. 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 I and it's about, Fall's here. Is there a time when we as uh, city employees get, well, that was a busy, <laughs> it's been busy, it's always busy. <clears throat> yeah, you know, even the winter time is, has got its busyness to it as well, for different reasons, of course, but there really isn't a slow time throughout the city, as you and all the other city employees know. Well, I think... As you go along, mm -hmm. there's just so much planning all the time, yeah. you know, and I think that's the thing is there's a lot of planning and a lot of projects right. and coordinating those two mm -hmm. things uh, can be a mm -hmm. lot. We've spent a lot of time talking about construction this year. We've talked about yeah. construction and construction in a lot of different yeah. facets. Uh, and one of those uh, is the patio. Uh, we had a patio grand opening mm -hmm. uh, at the Fitchburg Senior Center. The outdoor space mm -hmm. around the city campus is already pretty mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just a very nice piece to add on to uh, what the Senior Center already has going on down there. Yeah, as you mentioned, just the uh, this the setting that the City Hall is in does have some nice environmental features to it. Uh, it does give you a, at least a sense of outdoors in certain areas. And, you know, where this patio is, is situated is, you know, at the edge of this entrance to the uh, Senior Center, which also happens to be kind of right on the edge of the City Hall campus here. And um, it does give some nice views of some trees and, you know, look to the north where, you know, there's currently no, no development uh, on the lot to the north of City Hall. So I think this would be a nice place to kind of sit here on the backside of City Hall. There's trees around you on uh, at least two of, you, of the three uh, sides, not next to the building and uh, west facing to a certain extent. Uh, no, it's north side of the building, but you'll get some western sun and so forth. So I think it'll be a really nice spot for folks to be able to go out and just spend some time, hopefully decompress a little bit, enjoy the scenery around, and uh, have some good conversation and take advantage of the space. How about the people donating to this project? Yeah. Because this was a full fundraised uh, project, yeah. and I think it says a lot about uh, investing right. in the community uh, in this project. Yeah. Kudos to Jill McCone, the Senior Center Director, and her team, obviously, for being a part of the effort. But absolutely, this is a community project, right? And uh, we're fortunate to have a Friends of the Fitchburg Senior Center uh, nonprofit that is also a, a very valuable piece of the overall puzzle to the operations yeah. of the Senior Center and funding in particular. And, uh, you know, this project came in right around $100,000. And for the community to be generous to, to donate that uh, level of funding for this particular project is uh, great and something that we here at City Hall and I'm sure at the Senior Center truly appreciate. Uh, the efforts of our community members uh, to provide the financial ability for the city to do this. Yeah, no, it's pretty special yeah. up and again, pretty special place. Stop on down and check that out uh, here at the city community center, senior center. Yep. So I always like city hall, uh, stop. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, city campus, maybe. I didn't yep. really say that. Uh, continuing with construction, uh, two things open, two things, well, one mm -hmm. thing stayed closed. On it. Well, we'll start with the one uh, that a lot of people uh, probably had seen. Uh, well, I guess they both are pretty popular, but I'm going to pick the uh, Lacey and uh, Seminole mm -hmm. Highway uh, roundabout yep. uh, opening up uh, last week first, and uh, quite the quite the project happening yeah. out there. If you look, if you keep going, <laughs> you're like, oh my gosh, what's happening? Mm -hmm. But um, one part opens. Yeah. What do we got left? So it was great to first and foremost to get the Seminole Highway Lacey Road roundabout open uh, just in time for the start of the school season. That was the goal all along and uh, you know through the diligent work of our public works and engineering team and the contractors that they worked with you know we're really grateful that 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 uh, met its goal and was open by the time school started to just help facilitate movement through that area and also you know take some of the burden off the residential neighborhoods that were getting uh, a fair amount of increase of traffic as well so we certainly appreciate uh, our residents uh, understanding of that uh, challenging situation over the summertime but of course uh, the remainder of the project is left uh, the reconstruction of Lacey Road west of Seminole Highway all the way back to near uh, Fitrona Road 
and that will basically take a rural road to uh, a more urbanized road uh, in anticipation of future growth and development and uh, that project is slated to be wrapping up uh, right around November 1st so hopefully the weather continues to cooperate and uh, materials and and uh, the crews are able to continue to to be uh, on site when needed and we'll get that project wrapped up and you know in a couple of months you and I are talking about another completed project. I, 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 that it's something else if you haven't seen it um it Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a massive project. I yeah, mean, the, the, really the roundabout it was uh, its own uh, feat, but whew. yeah, yeah. I went through the roundabout already a couple of times. It uh, looks great, works great. You know, I think more and more of us uh, are getting more accustomed to more roundabouts, and you know, familiarizing ourselves with how they work. And uh, this was a perfect location for my non-engineering technical <laughs> background for a for a roundabout. And, uh, you know, overall, this is a significant project. I think it's about an $8.5 million project in total uh, that the city is, is completing there. So, uh, but I do think that, that it, will, uh, it will be uh, very uh, helpful and useful when it's done. Yeah, no, I think there are so many things that we've talked about in the past mm -hmm. that make this project uh, pretty special. And when it is completed, I mean, it's going to serve uh, residents uh, and, and commuters very well mm -hmm. in a lot of different uh, areas there. So we'll look forward to talking you about that finished project mm -hmm. uh hopefully november uh mm -hmm. first of november the other project uh was lacy and syene road mm -hmm. uh, that project had a little bit of a delay mm -hmm. we've been talking yeah. about it yep. that opened as well uh i've been through i have not been through the roundabout but yeah. i've definitely been through that one turned out really nice yeah i have not yet been through that one to be honest with you uh but uh, my understanding is yes so that it uh, did open last week as well and it, initially it's got a four-way stop uh, there, uh, there will be traffic signals going in uh, in the near future, but uh, we at least wanted to get the road reopened uh, to help facilitate some traffic through that area a bit better. And of course, uh, while that area reopened, uh, uh, East Cheryl and Syene, that intersection has closed uh, for intersection improvements there. And then we'll also be adding traffic signals at that particular intersection as well. So. Again, we, we appreciate uh, folks' understanding and flexibility uh, with these road projects. We know they do create impacts, particularly uh, not for just folks driving through, but residents in nearby uh, neighborhoods who get an increase in traffic. So um, you know, we have seen that with the, the clo closing of the East, East Cheryl and Syene intersection. And uh, our engineering and PD teams uh, do the best that they can to, to um, you know, work with the, the residents and try to put things out like our speed display signs and increase presence and adjust signs where appropriate uh, to try to, to be responsive to, to the issues that, are, that, that, that come up. A good point here, too. I mean, they're, both projects online have the maps uh, for you for taking mm -hmm. the, the sign detour. There's a reason that they pick the, the sign detour for where it is. So mm -hmm. if you can use that, use it. Mm -hmm. I know there's shortcuts to everything, yeah. but um, there's reasons that we do that. And safety mm -hmm. is top notch there, along with uh, just uh, keeping everybody moving right. at a good speed. Yep. When will uh, that intersection then open up? So that one is also looking, you know, right around November 1st. So we hope that that one will reopen. So. Perfect. We'll keep you updated Hopefully on it. Hopefully that one doesn't fall victim to some of the delays at the other intersection. No, there's no victim to. So. It should, I'm going to go on a limb here and mm -hmm. say it's going to be okay. I All mean, right. they, they, it's going to be okay. If you yeah. say so. I say so, Mr. Administrator. Uh, finally, one more uh, project. Well, many construction projects going mm -hmm. on, but resurfacing projects are in full yeah. swing now. Got a little bit of a late start on some of them. Not late, just later in the season than you would probably expect, but right. uh, appreciate patience as they get through these. Yeah, absolutely. So the city actually did not do any resurfacing projects last year. So we, in effect, have two years worth of resurfacing projects taking place right now, uh, totaling, I think, over $2 million uh, throughout the city. So the contractors that are out there doing the, the resurfacing work are, you know, doing, you know, a, a number of streets throughout the entire city and we do know that this is an inconvenience to residents and uh, it does affect their ability to access their their home and it sometimes maybe even to actually get in their driveway and those sorts of things and we do uh, ask for patience and understanding and flexibility uh, our team uh, of engineers you know does this for a living and, and they certainly have the training and expertise to try to make these projects go as smoothly as possible um, you know, we try to do as much outreach in advance as, as we can be reasonably expected to do. And, and sometimes there's enough and sometimes there isn't. But at the end of the day, if anybody does have any questions, they are welcome to contact our engineering department. 
and ask those questions and speak about any questions or, or comments or concerns that they may have about a particular resurfacing project in their in their neighborhood. But it is a great opportunity, obviously, for the city to utilize uh, the funds that are provided to it to reinvest in its roadway infrastructure. And again, while it is an inconvenience, uh, whether we're talking these large reconstruction projects or a more uh, simple, in relative terms, resurfacing project, um, you know, again, with the inconvenience, the, the trade-off, uh, I hope people feel is worth it, that they've got a, a new street that uh, should last another 25 to 30 years. Got to get caught up in some uh, respects, yeah. but uh, they're doing as quick as mm -hmm. work with quality in mind and right, safety absolutely. and everything else. So I appreciate the update and all the updates. Uh, we'll mm -hmm. catch you back here next month mm -hmm. uh, for some uh, more construction updates. Sounds good. And other news. I hope so. <laughs> all right. That's Chad Brackley, the city administrator. All the stuff we talked about today, it's on the website, FitzwordWI.gov. <laughs>